can't believe you guys! I'm Danger Gen Vex, and welcome to Really Random! So, our three winning words for this week were YouTube, ukulele, and bodyguards. And naturally, I put them into the generator, I got the results, and I put them up on Twitter for you guys to vote. These were your options. And guess what won? <laughs> really, guys? Really? You're going to ask me for my YouTube cheat sheet? Or you want me to talk about a YouTube cheat sheet in general? How much do you think I know about this stuff? I've only been doing it for about three weeks. Ay. Well, if that's what you want, then that's what I'll give you. So, instead of talking about what I think is going to be, or what should be, the UV YouTube cheat sheet, I'll tell you what mine is. That doesn't mean you should use it. It doesn't mean that I'm right. Hell, it doesn't even mean it's the best. If you want those kinds of things, go talk to the guys who are actually making their fortunes off YouTube, okay? Not me sitting here, you know, wishing that I had a pizza right now. God, I want a pizza right now. Okay, so we're going to start off with pretty much assuming that you have nothing. You just want to start your YouTube channel and you have no clue where to start. When I started YouTube, or when I started my channel, and I'm not putting about talking about putting videos on it I'm just talking about when I actually started the channel and that was oh poo that was like two years ago two and a half three years ago probably more because time flies but when I originally did that it was almost ridiculously easy I mean I had my Google account and my Google page and one day I got a notification that I qualified for a unique URL because I had a couple of followers and I'd been around for a certain amount of days and using that I got a YouTube account and a unique YouTube URL which I'm still stuck with by the way <laughs> for now but I got the unique YouTube URL I got approved for monetization like such that's not how it works anymore and it's not how it's gonna work for you as far as I know now, you can still start your YouTube channel, but you're not going to get a unique URL until you have a very certain amount of followers and a certain amount of views. If you want to qualify for monetization, you need to have 10,000 views on your channel before you can activate it. So yeah, they've made it a bit tricky, especially with all that ad craziness that went on a little while ago. You also need a Google AdSense account, so keep that in mind. But if you've got a Google account, you can pretty much manage it. The basic is this. Starting a monetized YouTube account is nowhere near as easy as it used to be. So if that's what you want to do, you've got to be in it for the long run because 10,000 views is not as easy to get to as it sounds. Just say. Okay, so let's say you've already got your channel, your YouTube account, your channel, it's all set up. What do you do next? Well, the first thing that you wanna do obviously is make it look like a channel. And to do that, you're gonna need what they call brand art. You're gonna need your icon and your logo and you know, the big channel logo that generally looks awesome, not like mine. Um, and an avatar that looks cool, also not like mine. <laughs> but you're gonna need those things. And they all come in different shapes and sizes. So I actually went and I got a cheat sheet for that, that I did use that told me what size to make what and gave me a couple of tips around what kind of colors to use, should it be transparent, what kind of sizes, no, and I'm not talking about dimensions now, I'm talking about actual file size. I'll see if I can find it somewhere, I probably have it bookmarked, but I'll put it down in the description for you. It contains details not just about YouTube images, but 
Twitter, Facebook, uh, and a whole host of others that you might actually want to know about. The biggest piece of advice that I can give you about your art is have fun and be unique. Let it show who you are and what you do. Don't just go and grab a random image and slap it on there. No. If you don't have the art skills, maybe ask a friend who does, but I'm sure you can come up with a little something that showcases what you are. Sometimes I think even a stick drawing might be better than having nothing up there at all. Let's say that you're past that stage too. You've got your channel, you've got your brand art, you've got everything set up, but now you want to start doing your videos. When it comes to videos, it's an entire process and that's probably where a lot of YouTubers or new YouTubers don't actually, you know, they don't expect the amount of work that it takes. From actually setting up and recording the video to the end point where you need to upload and release the video, it's a process. And I have a little checklist. <laughs> embarrassing as that is to admit I have a checklist and a sh an Excel Excel schedule and I have shown this to people so they know it exists there is proof but I have this checklist and the Excel schedule that helps me keep track of everything that I do if I didn't I would have lost my mind by now arguably I already have we're not gonna go there right now so the first thing I do is, or the first thing you want to do is talk about your equipment. Now there I can't give you a lot of advice. I was kind of lucky with my equipment because I can really go out there and buy the best. The microphone that I'm using is actually a corduroy microphone that was gifted me um, by somebody from my father's church, I think. Dad, please help clarify. So I have that microphone and it is actually a very good microphone. It's a performance microphone. Um, I just don't have sound paneling at all. What I've got and what you don't see is a curtain tent. Yes, you see this, this behind me, you see this, okay? What you don't see is this tent, okay? That's right above me here. I'm trying to, yeah, you see that? That is my curtain tent. And that is to try and help me diminish the echo in this room because I don't have sound panels. I know that they say you can use a bed mattress as well. I don't have a bed mattress. And even if I did, I'd be sleeping on the thing. What I've got is a gigantic heavy futon and I ain't moving this thing anywhere. So there's that microphone soundproofing or not soundproofing but you know audio paneling and then there's your camera when it comes to cameras again i got very very lucky i'm using a logitech web camera to report uh, to record which was also again gifted to me by my dad love you dad but i know that a lot of bigger youtubers actually record with separate video cameras which is pretty awesome and I would love to do that, but we can't all spend thousands upon thousands to set up our original recording studios. So do what you can, do what you can with what you've got. Be creative, you know, put a sock over your microphone if it's not right. Use different kind of programs, you know, experiment a little and you might get somewhere that you like. Now, not all of us have top of the line equipment either. And I don't, to be honest. I mean, sometimes, some games, I have to record the videos in parts to try and get it done. The thing is, it is doable. It's not always easy, but it's doable. Um, and you just have to find out how to make it work for you. Again, also, if that means that if your system can't support it, tr don't try to record in 4K at 60 frames per second or, or, or something in, in that line. It's not going to work. You know, do the best with what you can and you can increase the quality as the time goes. When you've made your video and you've edited your video, I always make sure that I check 
everything when I record at least two or three times you know to make sure that everything is recording with the correct settings and I still sometimes miss things so always 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 double check I can't emphasize that enough double check that everything is recording um, double check that it's recording what you want it to record try and make sure that your surrounding area is say as um, quiet and aware that you're recording so that you don't end up with me in the garden services like we did in that one as you saw in the blooper reel because that was so much fun and then you know make your video put it together what I also do is some of my videos just end up too big to upload this is an optional part of my cheat sheet or my process and that is to handbrake some of my videos I don't handbrake them severely I don't want that kind of massive drop in quality but I handbrake them just enough to bring their size down without losing you know excessive amounts of quality so that I can actually upload them hashtag shitty internet so you've got your video you've got it recorded edited you know and now you finally have it uploaded there are certain things that I do. Now I have default settings on YouTube. You know, it allows an, or it enables monetization in certain formats by default. It labels them a certain way. It has a couple of um, uh, tags. And that's another thing that you have to pay attention to, both to your channel tags and description and video tags and descriptions. Those are what help people find you and find your videos so make sure you've got a good title on your video something that both describes the video and what you're doing in it you know which is why I always say it's a vlog or I name the game that I'm playing and I put some terms that you know describe what happens in the game to some extent and then I put in the description now I know a lot of people think that one little paragraph is enough as a description. These days not anymore because the descriptions get profiled and keyword searched as well by YouTube and by Google. So write you know like a small two or three paragraphs describing what it's about if it's a game you're playing put in some information about the game link your social media in the description so if you've got twitter facebook instagram link those things then go to your tags that is next on my to-do list when you put in tags always make sure that you put in some of your channel tags like who you are and what you do put in what you do in the video tags applicable to the video so if you play a game say that you're doing a let's play or that you're playing a game or something similar in the tags and you know a few other things what you shouldn't do is tag load or keyword load your tags because YouTube will notice that don't you say or use Markiplier plays in your tags and there's you know you're not Markiplier don't do that that is bad that will get you in trouble YouTube checks for that so don't do that that's keywords and that's all on the first panel the another thing that you need to pay attention to is thumbnails now I tend to use you know I have some I like to think I have some gimp skills so I have fun with my my um, thumbnails I try and propose some stuff from the game or my face as I scream or talk or peace or whatever you know just put that in there and you know just do something fun with your thumbnail try not to use an automatically generated thumbnail because those kind of suck so that you've got those and you've checked your monetization if you haven't and you've checked all the other settings like categorizing your video does it go under games does it go under vlogs does it go under entertainment comedy you've got all those things make sure that you check that you've categorized your video correctly other than that the rest is pretty self-explanatory um, also please if you've got copyrighted stuff in your video don't monetize the damn thing you're gonna get in trouble okay good so that is basically the uploading process and making sure that the video is correct now another thing that I always do is scheduling and that is because I've pretty much made up my mind to put out two videos a day 
Now, what makes it so tricky for me is because one, I have to record, edit and do everything myself. Um, and I know there's a lot of people who do that, but I tend to run into to technical difficulties a lot. So that makes for some difficult editing. Uh, we also have the internet issue, as you know, and then there's the fact that the power or the internet can always go off at the drop of a hat, and I never know if it will or not. So I need to be prepared. And with me having tried to commit to two videos a day, a commitment that I've so far managed to keep, it makes for a pretty hectic schedule. You know, I sometimes, you know, some of my friends ask me, when's the last time you slept? And I honestly can't answer and say last night because I can't remember. I, I sometimes don't know when I've last slept. Today is one of those days. I don't know when I last slept. Actually, I think it was just, I think I slept for an hour yesterday afternoon, just before I got a phone call from my mom to pick up my sister-in-law. Yeah. She interrupted the three hours that I set aside for sleep and made it into an hour because I had to leave to miss traffic. So if you've got a schedule to keep, if you've committed to a schedule, that's where my handy dandy Excel spreadsheet comes in for me. It lists every video that I've decided to make for the week and then where I am in the process with that video. Does it still need to be recorded? Is it coded orange for recorded but not edited? Is it yellow for edited but not uploaded? Um, is it mustard for, well, it's this funky yellow. I've got two shades of yellow that I use. Is it funky yellow for uploaded but not completed? In other words, it doesn't have its thumbnail, description, monetization, etc. set up. And is it green coded for uploaded, set up, ready to go, scheduled, done, shanana, we're good to go. So that is what I use. And it tells me where I am in the process, what's done, what's not, what I still need to do. And with the editing and the recording and everything, like when I'm, when I'm rendering a video, or handbreaking a video, I can't record. I, I just can't. Um, so, and if I need to record anything that involves me being online, like push the button, or would you rather, or gaming with friends, I can't be uploading at those times because then I won't have enough internet to go around. So I have to watch my schedule so that I can record a whole bunch of things and then render and handbrake and upload different things at the same time so that there's never a moment wasted. It doesn't always work, but I try. So if you want to work via a schedule, you know, working along a similar format might actually help you. And that is what I would recommend probably most of all. The final thing you should probably put on your cheat sheet or to-do list or whatever, or not final thing, another thing you should, is your in-screen annotations. You can use one of the templates, you don't need to get fancy. Just import it, say, you know, put my logo in the middle, put a recently uploaded video over here, put a video that suits my audience over here, and it will do that for you automatically. So that is another thing you need to remember. Also remember, and this is a mistake that I made in the first few videos, that in-screen annotations can only be for the last 20 seconds. So if you have an outro that's 20 seconds long and you want to put a clip of something at the end, remember to cut a piece of your outro so that you have a place for that clip at the end. Uh, just watch how you do the end of your video. The final two pieces of advice that I can give you for your cheat sheet, and I'm calling it your cheat sheet because you should make your own. If you want to do YouTube, you should, you know, listen to what I have to say, uh, decide what works for you and what doesn't, and make your own. But the final two bits of, you know, or two things on my cheat sheet that I would say to you is one, sharing. Sharing is caring. Um, there was a time about four or five years ago 
where subscribers would come to you easy peasy those days are gone if you want to appeal to an already overly saturated audience you've got to go out there you've got to share on twitter and you've got to be on facebook and instagram and i don't even get to all these places you know and and reddit and you know pinterest and wherever else people think of sharing their stuff these days and that is something that i've had very very little time for because i've been trying to get a bit ahead in my schedule and i'm still working on that but that is definitely something i would recommend very important don't expect to just go and spam your stuff somewhere interaction is key interact with your comments interact with communities i mean i i mentioned them before but the new tubers community have been like a godsend to me they have saved whatever little sanity i have left when they're not having crazy conversations you know who i'm talking about guys you know they've given me great advice and they've supported me through a lot of this um, along with my friends and family for that matter so make sure that you've you've got this you've got some community around you friends family support like youtubers um they come they or they become invaluable to you the second thing that i would tell you is don't expect to grow you know in leaps and bounds unless by some fluke don't expect to grow in leaps and bounds in your first month or two this isn't something that just goes poof and money rains down from the heavens and it's hallelujah no it doesn't work that way okay <laughs> it's hard work it's a job and you don't even get paid for doing your job for frack knows how long so subscribers they're not going to drop out of the sky and into your lap it doesn't rain men that's just a song it's not reality it's something that you've got to wait for and i know you can go out and do sub for sub and boost your subscriptions that way but in the end you're just going to end up with a lot of people who don't give a crap about what you're posting they've just subbed to you so that you would sub to them in the hopes that one or the other would finally give in and watch one of the other's videos they're not really there for your content so rather be patient take it step by step and build your audience organically and you'll end up with people who actually care about what you do and who like to see what you do i almost forgot and this is the most important thing on my cheat sheet it's the vice now i know that if, if i'm not mistaken mark plyer's vice is kittens when he rages or when things gets too bad the first thing he does is he runs to kittens mine i always have a little bit of coffee in my cup and i have one sip left so excuse me Ugh. So have your vice, whether it's a snack or your cat or pictures of kittens or some music. Sometimes you're just gonna have to take a, you know, take a moment, stop, take a deep breath, hope for the best. Not worry about what you're gonna have to be doing in five or ten minutes, like editing this video, and restore your inner well-being. After that. Give in to the craziness again and everything will be fine in time. But that is basically my tips slash cheat sheet slash what to do and what not to do. <laughs> I guess this kind of became an amalgamation of everything that I could tell you about YouTube. Tips, tricks, do, don't, checklist, whatever. There is one thing that I forgot. And this is a tool that I will link down below for you. It's called TubeBuddy. If you really want to get into YouTube, you don't need this, but it is one of the most useful tools that have been recommended to me personally. I find it very easy to use once you've taken a bit of time to learn it, to help schedule things and manage your YouTube checklist and, you know, 
check stats and that sort of thing. So it's, it's a very useful tool and one that I would definitely recommend. Anyway, that does it for this really random. And I think the way that I jumped from thing to thing in this video, it really is a really random video, which is pretty much what I want. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you found it useful and that you'll go out there and make a success of your own YouTubes if you've got one. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave me a like down below. Also, don't forget to leave me words for next week's really random. But thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time. Bye!